Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to build this S-Model Yagd Panther. I haven't built an S-Model kit for a while, so why not? This is a 172nd scale kit that builds two Yagd Panthers, for double the panth yagding, I suppose. The back of the box is upside down, let's just fix that up. There's a basic painting guide, and some warnings about studying the instructions, which I would suggest is a pretty good idea. There isn't a whole lot else here, so let's look inside the box. There's a bunch of stuff with a whole lot of plastic wrapping, which I don't think is the best, but it is what it is. The parts on these sprues are pretty well moulded. The tracks are a single piece and I would say the detail on the treads is a bit of a letdown, but the rest is pretty decent. I do believe these S model kits are intended for wargaming, so that would be the main reason for them having tracks as a single piece, and for some simplification of detail. I don't have a problem with this, but some people may. The rest of the details are pretty good, and there are a few bits that you'll need to glue on, but not nearly as much as you might expect to find on a similar scale model. Things are well moulded and nice looking, but there are mould lines as always. They shouldn't really take a whole lot of effort to clean up. It all looks pretty simple to put together, even the photo etch. It's just a couple of simple grills in this kit. Some other S model kits I've put together have had kind of annoying photo etch that just seems to be there so they can say, we've got photo etch. I do think the holes in these grills are a bit small and you won't be able to see the details beneath it, but they could be worse. I actually can't remember if decals were included in this kit, if they were, I haven't taken a picture of them, but it's conceivable that they might be in the bag on the other side of this photo etch. I'm a darn fool. I really should have kept track of that. The instruction booklet is pretty much what I would expect from an S model kit. The instructions are fairly well laid out and easy enough to understand and follow. Though, again, I have managed to mess things up because I wasn't paying enough attention to the instructions. The last page shows a fairly nondescript three-tone camo scheme. It doesn't show any markings, so perhaps there aren't meant to be any decals. And if I do happen to want markings when I paint this, I'm confident I've got plenty of them in my decal collection to choose from when it comes time to paint. Okay, that's probably enough waffling for now. Let's put this thing together. The first thing to do is add the side, well, they're not side skirts, but they will hold the side skirts. I'm not sure what this part is called, so we'll just call it, how about Trevor? Yeah. It took me a little bit of fiddling to get Trevor on, particularly the first one. There isn't really anything it will lock into, but once I got my brain around it, it was fairly simple to put into place. There is a Trevor for either side of the model, and it should be pretty obvious which one is which. Next, the side skirts. The little vertical bits on the Trevors act as a guide for these, which makes it quite easy to get the positioning right, though it did still need a bit of pressure to get into place with minimal gaps. I then glue the track sets onto the lower hull part. I didn't film this, but I'm sure you can use your imagination to envisage what assembling this may have looked like. It's pretty simple. The next thing I did was to glue the upper and lower hull parts together. The more astute amongst you, or those who were there when I was streaming this, will notice that I've gotten a little bit ahead of myself. The fit is nice, and I really like the way the parts sort of interlock at the front, along the lines where the real armour plates interlocked. Very nice. Where I've messed up though is by omitting the machine gun, which needs to be installed from inside the hull. Yeah, kind of a problem. I didn't notice this for a while. When I did notice we had a bit of a chuckle on stream and I was able to save it, but you'll see that later. Moving along I glue the rear plate into place. This more or less just drops right into its position. Next, I assemble the main gun. The gun part is pretty neat and very nicely has a hole in the end of the barrel, so no drilling. The part slots into the gun mantlet and that assembly in turn slots into the recess, I guess you'd call it, for the gun. I'm pretty sure somebody explained the names for these parts before, but I've forgotten. The parts do go together pretty easily, and I would suggest at this point, thinking about how you want the gun's elevation to look because you'll have a hard time changing it later. I set that assembly aside to bond while I see to the roof details. My camera work is a bit poor and out of focus here, and at more points in the video than I'm happy with, so I do apologise for that, but you can still see what I'm doing. And what I'm doing is installing the hatches. 
The hatches are two simple parts, not especially difficult to install. Then, because I hear even the Germans like to breathe, I install the ventilator here on the roof. There's no keying for this, so you have to eyeball it, but that's not especially tricky. The mounting point for it serves as a pretty good guide. Then comes a headlamp for the front left fender. This is pretty simple to get into place. On the left side of the casemate, the gun cleaning kit's storage cylinder can be installed. There's keying for this, which is of course nice and handy. And, towards the rear, some spare track links. These are optional, so you could omit them, but I think they look pretty good. Or if you prefer, you could cut them up and use fewer links. The choices are, well, not limitless, but there are choices. At this point I noticed my mistake in leaving the machine gun out. I first tried to get it in there with tweezers, which wasn't very effective, and prying the hull parts apart at this point wasn't an option. Since there was two models in this box I really could have just shown you how I built the other one and ignored this, but I wanted to show you how I dealt with the problem, and maybe it'll help somebody. I glue the machine gun part to a length of sprue. It's still wet and hasn't bonded properly, so I was a bit careful with this. I didn't want it to stick somewhere inside the hull. I put the gun on sprue in through the hatch on the rear of the casemate and just kind of kajigged it around until it went into place. Obviously this isn't always going to be a viable solution if you forget your hull mounted MGs, but it worked this time, and I felt pretty good about being resourceful in dealing with what could have been a pretty annoying problem. Because the sprue wasn't fully bonded to the MG part I was able to remove it, though even if I wasn't able to remove all of it, I could have just clipped it down and left it inside the hull, and it wouldn't have been a problem. The next thing I did was to install the hatch that covers the opening I just used. This was of course pretty simple. Hopefully I don't need to shove anything else in through that opening. Now there's a few details for the rear of the casemate to install. Starting with this, what I think is an antenna mount that goes in the upper right. There is a guide for this, so it's pretty simple. Then comes a shovel, which you could leave off if you would prefer, and there isn't any keying for it, so I just position it and then add glue. I put this on the other side of the casemate when I built the other Jagd Panther this kit can make. Next comes this little hatch which I assume is for throwing spent shell casings out onto the engine deck. This is simple enough to get into place though it did need a bit of nudging. Another part to crowd up this small amount of casemate space is the fire extinguisher. This is simple enough of course, though it does leave the area looking a bit full I guess. Could be worse, but you can see why I've put the shovel on the other side for the second model. Next, after installing the spare track links on the right side, I glue on this whatever it is. Maybe it's a jacking block. There's no keying for this so you've just got to eyeball it, but that's not especially tricky. Then I glue the main gun into place, because what's the point of a Jagd Panther without that gun? You wouldn't be able to Jag any Panths, and that would be sad. The gun more or less just drops right into place in the opening in the front of the hull. Very nice. I follow that with the engine deck. This is a single piece and is easy to install. Hopefully you've been careful with the details on the back of the casemate. I can see installing those just a bit too low causing some fit issues. Next, I install the jack in between where the exhausts will go. This is pretty simple, though it did need a bit of nudging. And why not follow that with the exhausts? There is one of these for either side, and as best as I can tell they're identical, so it doesn't really matter which side you put which part on. Just don't put them on upside down. Unless you really want to I guess. I didn't. The final touch is the photo etch. The rectangular parts are pretty easy to get into place, because the spot for them is recessed. Of course because these are metal I'm using super glue. The two round pieces of photo etch go over the round fans, which I guess makes sense doesn't it? This isn't too hard to install, and as far as photo etch goes it's really not fiddly at all, though in my opinion it doesn't look all that good. I feel like the holes in it are just too small, and it kind of looks like a plate has been placed over these openings. I would like to be able to see in through these just a little bit. It's part of the kit so I installed it on the first Jagd Panther I built, but as you can see with the second I've left it off, and you can also see the differently placed shovel as well. I have to admit with the photo etch I'm not super convinced either way. There's not much detail to those grill fans and parts, but what is there is totally covered by the photo etch. I would really prefer something in between the two. I suppose in the end though it doesn't really matter. 
It's a relatively cheap kit aimed at wargamers, and it's going to represent a Jagd Panther pretty nicely when it's painted up, either way you choose to build it. And I suppose it's kind of obvious to say, but I'm still going to say it. The 172nd scale Jagd Panther from S model is now complete. I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. It looks as though it will Jagd Panthers pretty well, and who doesn't want that? Sure, if you're looking for a hyper-detailed model of a Jagd Panther for your display shelf, this isn't going to be it, and you'll probably have to spend a bit more money for something like that. But for its purpose, it's quite a decent little model. And it was enjoyable to put together. It took me one stream to build this model, well, technically two streams to build the kit, as I built one on a morning stream and the other on an evening stream. Still, that's relatively quick compared to some of the other kits I've been building lately. If you would like to watch me build models like this kit live on stream, mistakes and creative solutions to those mistakes and all, head on over to twitch.tv slash herbert underscore erpaderp or follow the convenient link in the description. And come hang out next time I go live. It'll be a good time and it would be even better if you were there. Self-promotion aside, I think this is a pretty good model. The local store I'd been buying my S model kits from for a while has not had any in stock for quite some time now which makes me sad, and they're not the easiest to find online either, at least within Australia, but I do enjoy them when I get the chance to build them. If you feel like it, why not check out some of my other S model builds? I'll link them in the description below. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comment section below. And if you haven't done so already, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a patron or YouTube member, or maybe just come say hi on Discord or Twitch. And if you're feeling really helpful, feel free to share this video around. That would be really cool. Links to all of my things are in the description below, and as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.